This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 2113. Have yourself a frugal little Christmas by Jen Hayes of jenhayes.me. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. Now let's get right to today's post and start optimizing your life. Have Yourself a Frugal Little Christmas by Jen Hayes of jenhayes.me. Christmas is an expensive time of year, and regardless of how much you earn, most families have to be frugal in some way or another. There's lots to buy and lots to organize. It's no wonder it's ranked as one of the most expensive and stressful times of the year. But Christmas really is a lot of fun, so it's all worth it. Just follow the tips here to stop yourself from overspending and getting into trouble financially. Number one, search for bargains. There are plenty of ways you can save money over Christmas if you shop smart. Wrapping paper, cards, bows, tape, gift tags, and more can all be bought cheaply in places like grocery stores, dollar stores, and eBay. Forget going for luxury here. You can still make your gifts look gorgeous with less expensive wrapping, and it's only ever going to be torn off and thrown away anyway. You can find stocking fillers and token gifts in the same kinds of places. Sometimes you need an inexpensive gift for a colleague, neighbor, teacher, or someone else that you're not extremely close to. An inexpensive box of chocolates from somewhere like this would do the trick. You can buy everything from dress jewelry to novelties to fluffy socks, bath products, and so much more on eBay for just a few dollars. Just be sure to check the shipping times. Christmas is just a few weeks away, and lots of sellers are across the world in Hong Kong. You may have to filter results to show just sellers in your country. Number two, DIY. When it comes to gift giving, it really is the thought that counts. So if you're short on cash, why not make some presents instead? You can make big batches of things like cookies and cupcakes, and you can purchase boxes or jars to display them in relatively cheaply. You can make things like DIY beauty products, soaps, sugar scrubs, and more. Not only will you be giving something completely unique, but it's made with love too. If you have a selection of less expensive items, which you want to look more impressive, a good option is to bundle them together in a basket. Wrap with cellophane and top of the bow and you have a gorgeous custom gift which looks impressive but didn't cost you much. It could be based on a theme. For example, a pamper hamper could contain some bath products, a candle, some cozy socks, and some chocolates. You could get these things from dollar stores. You could save a fortune and still get the joy of handing someone a present. They'll know you put the effort in too, which is far more special than the amount of money paid. Number three, use coupons. Why pay full price when you don't have to? Instead of forking out the full price, check sites like don'tpayfull.com, which have vouchers for different stores and you can save yourself some serious cash. Another option would be to use a cashback website like Ebates. You get a percentage back on whatever you buy. While it does take a few weeks for them to pay out, come January, you could have a nice chunk of money transferred to your bank account. This could be used towards your January bills, not to be sniffed at in a month where things are tight for most people. You could check out newspapers, magazines, and online forums for vouchers and coupons too. If you've got your finger on the checkout button, have a quick browse first and make sure you can't save yourself some money with a code. Number four, budget carefully. At a time of year that's all about spending and indulgence, it's easy to blow the budget but the last thing you wanna do is fall behind on bills or run up credit cards. You'll set yourself up to a bad start next year. Ideally, you'll have been saving towards Christmas for the last few months, and that way you have a chunk of money to make things easier. If you have to, dip into your general savings, but avoid missing payments for things or using credit cards and loans. Your best bet is to create a budget that works. Categories could be things like presents, food, decorations, cards, wraps and stamps, travel, and anything else you have to spend money on over the festive period. Work out exactly what you can afford to spend and then how much each category should be allocated. That way it doesn't get to mid-December and you realize you're all out of money and still have important things to buy. Number five, don't overspend on food. 
Christmas is of course all about the food. Getting family together and enjoying delicious meals, indulging and treating ourselves is the festive season in a nutshell. But you don't have to go overboard. If you're throwing a Christmas party, go potluck style and ask everyone to bring a dish or dessert. That way you get a nice mixture of things and it costs you a lot less. Instead of spending lots of money on fancy cakes and chocolate, have a look on Pinterest for recipes and make your own. It can work out far cheaper and gives you something fun to do over the festive weeks while you're off work. Another tip is to work out the amount of food you need based on the parties, days, and events you'd had planned and buy the right amount. Don't just overbuy and fill your cupboards. They'll be jammed packed with treats through January. No good if you plan on eating healthy in the new year. Number six, save on decorations. Another big expense at Christmas is decorations, but it doesn't need to be if you look after what you have and put everything away carefully after the festive season. They should last you for years to come. You can get very nice and expensive bits and pieces again from dollar stores and grocery stores, and you can make your own or look in thrift stores for secondhand decorations. You might need to buy new tree lights every few years, but aside from that, you should keep your spending on decorations down and use what you have. And number seven, earn some extra cash. Finally, earning a little bit of extra income can go a long way during this time of year. You could take on an extra shift at work or sign up for a Christmas job a couple of days a week. Companies often need extra hands over the festive period, so it shouldn't be difficult. You could sign up to a freelancing site and write some articles for money. Either way, it's an option for generating a little extra cash to put towards Christmas. If you don't wanna do any more work, how about selling what you no longer need? With people searching for gifts and spending a lot of money, it's the perfect time to do so. List items on eBay or on Facebook groups and sell them off to raise some extra money. It's a chance to have a declutter too, which is handy when new items will be coming into the home in the form of gifts. You just listened to the post titled, Have Yourself a Frugal Little Christmas by Jen Hayes of jenhayes.me. At the risk of sounding like a curmudgeon, I'm actually not a big fan of giving gifts and I mostly don't enjoy receiving them either. I have one exception. I'm all about a DIY or homemade gift. Of the gifts I've received from my Midwestern gentleman over the years, my favorites include the times he's written me very sweet love letters. And the first gift he ever gave me was a little figurine that he welded together from spare parts in his shop. These things were so thoughtful and creative. They cost him nothing but his time, and they made me feel very loved. Too often when someone gives me a store-bought gift with the best of intentions, it's just not something I like enough to keep. Then there's that awkward moment of, well, what do I do with this? Most of my loved ones know this by now, and thankfully gift exchanges aren't something I think about much. I'm not a total jerk. I absolutely give gifts, but I do so when inspiration strikes, not when a looming holiday or birthday is pressuring me. I mostly hate the pressure and obligation surrounding gift giving. Like I need to think of something the person would like and get it in time for a birthday or holiday. Usually if I see something I really wanna give someone or think of something I wanna make someone, I go ahead and give it without any regard for the occasion. I also find it very peculiar when someone asks me what I want and then they go and purchase it. There's just a lack of creativity with this kind of gift giving. For me, the thing that makes gift giving special is the thoughtfulness of it. Just purchasing something that I could have easily bought myself feels a little weird to me. As a minimalist, I don't like having too much stuff hanging around. And so I do appreciate on the rare occasion when I give or receive gifts for it to be something fairly consumable like food or flowers or something like that. That'll do it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you on tomorrow's show where your optimal life awaits.